Thanks for being here. Um, can everyone hear all right? Yeah. All right. People are the best. Fighting for the future of post-secondary education on this island. Oh my gosh! It's a politician! Okay, former, soon to be former politician. Speak, speak, speak! Hi everyone! Hi! Oh my god, you look amazing! Look at the energy! This is all, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey Sam! Yeah, amazing to see you all out here. I home catch you every morning when I drive on by with my kiddo. Um, it's so incredible what you're doing. It's so incredible the energy you're bringing to this. And it's so incredible because you're right. Yeah! And, and I know how hard it is to do this. I've been on that side of the line too. Um, and, you know, believe that people are with you. They know that this is the right thing to do. They know that you're not speaking up just for what's right for work, because you're speaking about what's right for education, for the students, um, for what our institutions should be. And they should be better. They should be better in how they conduct themselves. Yes. They should yeah. be better in how they have to account. And that dialogue, that conversation that you're bringing is absolutely critical. So thank you for being brave. Thank you for being brave, thank you for being out there, thank you for showing up for the people that can't and for those that maybe should know better and uh -huh. that, that, oh, that yeah. we are with you and standing with you even if we're not there every day like you are doing the thing. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Woo! Woo! Totally unplanned, totally unplanned. Uh -huh. um, I would like to begin with a territorial acknowledgement. Uh, we begin by paying respect to the Mi'kmaq people of Abiquit in Mi'kmaq. We acknowledge that Mi'kmaq is the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people, who in 1725 first signed the Treaty of Peace and Friendship with the British Crown. Those treaties did not deal with the surrender of lands, land and re lands and resources, but instead recognized Mi'kmaq title and negotiated a path towards an ongoing relationship between nations. We acknowledge we carry out our daily work in Mi'kmaq. We convey our respect to all indigenous peoples living in this region, to the knowledge keepers, and to their brave and resilient leaders past and present. We acknowledge that any efforts we make as a collegial association towards a, creating a fairer and more just workplace for more people, and the efforts we make to recognize and ameliorate the conditions that perpetuate injustices among us, must begin by also recognizing the injustice that lies at the base of the place we live and work. And then together we move towards a more just world for all of us. Thank, thanks so much for being here. What I, what I sincerely hope is our last gathering like this. Um, for at least a little while. Uh, we, we, have, we have started to make plans for next Thursday if necessary, but for now, let's, let's think about what we're doing. Excellent. Hey! How's it going? Good, good. Any words to say about the UPI situation? Well, uh, the only words I have to say today is uh, PEI is in uh, great shape because I'm just coming from the first day of the Rotary Youth Parliament, and the young people that are participating in that, you would be astounded and so incredibly proud of them. Awesome. They're amazing young people. Awesome. Thanks so much. We will be fighting for post-secondary education. Yes. We are fighting for post-secondary education. Um, we have a number of visitors from across the country joining us, and I'd like uh, I'd like to um, have them say a few words in just a moment. I only want to say a few things. Um, I've been thinking a lot about this. This is a, I mean, this is a very emotional time, I think, for a lot of us, and it's it's a challenging time. But it's time. It's about building relationships, and it's about making a difference. And I think um, we've been through a lot 
uh, together. Some of us, some of us are new here. Some of us have been here for a while. I do want to say that in the lead up to the uh, to the current uh, job action, uh, when I would go into the offices of people who had been here in 2006 for the 2006 strike, I would be talking to them, and invariably they would say, "Hold on," and they would run over to their closet and pull out their their picket sign <laughs> from 2006, and say, and they, and they would talk about who their picket captain was and who their picket teams were and things like that. And you guys are all doing that right now. Like you are all going to be. You're, you're forming relationships, and, and, and I want to get back to that in a second. But the first thing I want to talk about is the is the way that collective bargaining is about giving voice to workers. It's about giving workers uh, a voice in the way their workplaces look. It's about letting them uh, have make some decisions about their workplaces. And one of the things that I think all of us know about UPEI is it's awful about giving people voice. Amen. Um, there's, there's so many instances where voice has been denied to, to groups of people. One of the most egregious, of course, is uh, victims of sexual harassment. Uh, and, and the non-disclosure non agreements uh, that they've had to sign uh, in order to, uh, to silence their voices um, by, by the Board of Governors. And I think we need to recognize that th those are the people that we're dealing with right now. Um, this is about getting voice. This is about the Board of Governors saying that you, as workers at UPI, should not have voice and should not have an, a, a voice in how things work at this institution. And so when you stand out there on the picket line, what you're fighting for is a voice in the institution, a voice in how things are handled, how people are treated, and what the future of post-secondary education looks like, not only on this island, but across the country. So thank you so much for the work you've already done towards that. The other, the other thing I want to say is that it's also about community. Um, you're building communities now. You're, we're all a part of a community, uh, but you are going to remember this for the rest of your lives. I know I will. <laughs> and you're building communities right now. You are going to be those people down the road that are pulling your picket signs out of your closet and, and showing them to people who may not be interested, but you're still showing them. Um, and it's, it's incredible. You're building relationships now. You're, you know, we're, Coming out of COVID, Coming out of the disrespect I think many of you have expressed to me that you've experienced at UPI for the last five, ten years, coming out of that, we are building a new UPEI together right now. And that is so incredible. Um, one other thing I want to say is part of building, building community is recognizing the people that sometimes go unnoticed in the building of that community. Uh, all of us are doing a lot of work. Uh, but there's a whole family behind us that is helping us with that work. And I want to give thanks to my wife and kids. Yeah. Right over there. We were put up with uh, a bunch. And, um, and thanks so much for being there. And um, could, you, could you keep the music? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, thank you for your service. I love you guys. <laughs> Um, and I, we're going to move on to the flying pickets in just a second, but we have put together something that is way out of my comfort zone, <laughs> which, is, which is, yeah, probably by design. So you should have gotten this. If you did not get this flyer, go ahead and find someone that has this that feels comfortable with you getting close to them. Um, so I'm going to say the things that I believe in the italics, I will say those things, and then you say the things in bold. <coughs> new, new things. New things. Why not? <laughs> we can do this. Pa practice saying things loud? Yeah. Is there a good way to do that, Margo? Yeah, let's do the whole thing two times. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. You say a line and we'll practice start. saying the first one. Just try. Just start. Margo Reiskin, our uh, chief negotiator. <laughs> When, okay, when education is under attack, what do we do? Show up! Fight back! That works! Do it again. Do it again. Be loud this time, people. Come on. When education is under attack, what do we do? Show up! Fight back! 
When our student success is under attack, what do we do? Show up, attack. When workers' rights are under attack, what do we do? Show up, attack. When UPI faculty are under attack, what do we do? Show up, attack. I guess the line separates it, then I got it. I just do what Nia tells me to do, really. We all do, don't we? Uh, what do we want? More faculty! Alright, yeah, yeah, we should back that up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What do we want? More faculty! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? When do we want it? Now! What do we want? A better contract! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? A better contract! What do we want it? Now! Who's got the power? We got the power. What kind of power? Union power. What kind of power? power. What kind of power? power. power. Alright! I, I don't really understand that last one. What is that? <laughs> And that, that's it? I think that's all the words I have now, but I'd like to pass it over to um, Mike Shaw, who's the president of the CAUT Defense Fund. Thank you very much, Mike. I hope you can all hear me. My name is Michael Shaw. I'm from the University of Manitoba Faculty Association, and I'm here today representing your National Defense Fund. The National Defense Fund consists of 66 different unions all across Canada, and as you've been following the news, there's been more and more strikes, but there's been more and more solidarity, which is even better. So that's why we're here. We have flying pickets. We do this every Friday when there's a strike anywhere in Canada from one of our member unions. We happen to be in PEI today. We've been all over the country in the last little while because all of these university administrations seem to be reading the same playbook, take away workers' rights, impose greater workloads, make sure your uh, sessional and contract people don't have job security, and it's horse hockey wherever it happens to happen, and we need to fight back wherever it happens to happen, and that's why we're in the PEI. Your defense fund was here last week Air Canada only wanted four of us to come last week. Uh, apparently that was a Montreal issue. But anyway, there's a whole group of uh, ten of us here today. And we don't want to be here next Thursday. We really don't want to be here next Thursday. But if you need us, we'll be here next Thursday and every other Friday after that until your workers get the contract you need so that you can teach the students and do the research and make PEI and Canada a greater, stronger, more educated country. So thank you very much for your work. <laughs> and who values their learning experience and they know who it is that values their tuition dollars. They know the difference, they see the difference and they are behind you too. It is so inspiring to see. And everyone that has shown up uh, on the picket line and here at the rally, it's just so fantastic to see this solidarity because the people united can never be defeated. Hello everyone. <laughs> you know I was here last you were. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And there is a reason again that I am here. This, this time is a different reason. <laughs> different reason is because this is the second week, I want to share tons of greetings from York University Faculty Association and 56,000 students on their behalf. Now, there is a teacher. We 
hold the record of strike, <laughs> which is 56 days. Oh. I don't want you to beat that record, but here is the good news. <laughs> Again, good news. What was the good news? When strike ended, we got what we wanted. Our president got fired. <laughs> Because I can see the shining face of my colleagues, including student, faculty, other union members, so glowing, so shining, that I must say, we will win! We will win! has already sent you $1,000 and another $1,000 is on the way. Thank you very much and hold on, success is for you, only for you. Hey, Hassan, just to confirm, do I see your name on the list for coming back next week? <laughs> He is with us until we get a deal. Flying pickets, yes. yes. Not flying, busing pickets. Busing. Ah, yay. Hi, everybody. I'm Martin Chandler. I am from Cape Breton University Faculty Association. Yay. And as was mentioned, as some of you know me, I am bus guy. Uh, I, don't know for sure, I, guess. Um, I bring uh, $1,000 from the Cape Breton University Faculty Association. Yay. a new flying picket person. I'm a pretty new person. I'm a librarian with Sabufa. Um, and just here to, I wasn't prepared with all kinds of inspiring words, but uh, you are UPEI. Uh, thank you so much for everything you do. Uh, keep up the, the good work. I'm also involved with PEI myself. My, my father's side of the family is from here. My father went to St. Dunstan's College. <laughs> We'll have some some words to the administration when they get that you know letter of please donate. <laughs> but stay strong. Uh, Sabufa stands with you. We, we, we were you were with us uh, about a month and a half ago. Um, so we're we're with you as well. So we send you all the all the greetings. Thank you so much. I, I think we need to take note of the number of librarians that are on. Yeah. An another one coming up. I also want to take note of the number of librarians on the executive committee, the number of librarians that are nailing it. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I, I couldn't go unnoticed. Thank you. I am here because of Mike. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Only Mike. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, I, I, I met him a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Four weeks ago at uh, um, for, uh, no, um, Mama, yeah. uh, St. John's, no, St. John's. Uh, yeah, Bamfa, that's right, yeah. So we met at Bamfa, and I promised to come and support him. Anyways, um, what I want to say. Show up. Yeah! Fight back, right? Show up. Fight back. All right, one more thing. Bob Marley says what? Get up, stand up. Stand up for your what? For you are right, right? So let's do it. Get up, stand up. Oh, you are right, right? Yeah. Don't give up the fight. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now you've seen the light. Yeah, yeah was right, right? Now we have seen the light. No. That the administration was fooling around with us, right? But they can fool us. They can fool some of us, but not all of us all the time, right? Yeah. So right. now you have seen the light, and that's why we are here. We are here to support you to get up, stand yeah. up. Fight for your life and don't give up the fight. All right, my name is Dominic Silvio, Dominic. and I'm coming from Dalhousie University, a faculty association. I'm a librarian by profession. All right. Um, I have been doing flying pickets, and that's why I met Mike, and I'm coming to support Mike for that. Uh, Dalhousie sends you folks uh, money every month. $2,500 last week. This week it's going to be uh, $1,000, and then next week I'm going to come back. I hope. I don't want to be here. No. You know, I don't want to. I remember, you know, I remember
remember we went to um, one of the one of the uh, flying uh, pickets at. Uh, uh, he's right there keeping quiet, uh, Ledbridge University. Um, and, and the chief negotiator said, this is one of the best places that I don't want to be in. <laughs> and I'm telling you, this is one of the best places I don't want to be in. I don't want to be here next week. I want to see you folks teaching. Yeah. yeah. Preparing for exams. Yeah. Yeah. And all that. So, wish you all the best. Solidarity. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, David Stewart. I'm the president of the Faculty Association at the University of Calgary. Yeah. We're uh, very proud to uh, support you. I was uh, very proud to give uh, Larry our, our first check, at least, for $2,000. Uh, and it's, it's not just to support you. I feel like I'm supporting myself when I give yeah. you uh, this book. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that might sound a little selfish, <laughs> but we're fighting for the rights of university professors all across the country. Yeah. Not yeah. just that, we're fighting for the rights of students all across the country. Yeah. And not just that, we're fighting for the rights of all workers right yeah. across the country. Every game that we get is a game for workers in, uh, in Canada. Two things I want to say in closing, and by the way, I'm not a librarian. Teachers are teachers too. First of all, you are UPEI. Not the administration. This is UPEI standing out here today. Secondly, you've won. It's not a matter of will you win, you've won. You've stood up for your rights. You've showed people what they need to do to protect themselves. And on behalf of the 2,400 members of TUCFA, I thank you for your service. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Dan O'Donnell, I'm the president of the University of Lethbridge Faculty Association. And I think uh, I can probably uh, speak a little bit to what comes after this strike is over. We were on strike last year, uh, we did our best, but only managed 40 days. Uh, <laughs> It wasn't for lack of trying, as the administration kept saying, our demands were really tough. Uh, we wanted the same as everybody else on the government mandate. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Just, but let me talk about what happened, because I'm seeing even more, actually, than what I saw on our picket line. This, this picket line is, in fact, like we said several times during our strike, uh, the most wonderful place that we don't want to be. Mm. And, that today. I, I first of all have never seen a picket line where everybody's holding on to the back of the person in front of them. It, was, <laughs> it looked like an a, a, a exhibition, an ex, a trek up Mount Everest rather than a picket line. Um, but when it's that thick, uh, it has to make an impression. That was that was really something else. <laughs> about what comes after because although your university president, your university provost, the chief financial officer may not realize it, there is an after. Uh, you all have to work together again. Mm. When you come back though, it won't be the same place. Lethbridge is not the same place that it was for the decade before. Woo. It's a place we have a voice now. Yes. Woo. Woo. tell you, you know, as a faculty association president, I get CC'd on all sorts of angry emails to deans and presidents and vice presidents. I think they pretty much all end. Have you not learned the lesson of this strike? <laughs> our members of our academic senate are organized. They hold the administration to account in a way that I'd never seen in 20 years. 
our departments are standing up as units across and are now just insisting on their rights. Our uh, individual faculty members, students are simply not taking the, the silencing and the abuse that they put up with for the five or ten years before we had our strike. Yeah. Yeah. It's not all milk and honey yet. We still have the same president, we still have the same provost, we still have the chief financial officer, but only for eight more weeks. <laughs> My final words for you are to remember that this shall pass, but you won't forget it. I'm going to get killed if I don't say this. And I'm bringing $500 from our membership for this week and next week and as long as it takes. Did I miss any flying tickets before I pass it over to Margot Riskin? Our chief negotiator. Thank you all so much. I'm going to try to save my voice for the table if they ever come back. <laughs> I've been describing the last uh, few months, I guess the last year, as the theater of the absurd. Um, and I feel like we've taken a hard right into some strange episode of General Hospital. <laughs> but you know what? Your bargaining team is, is here. We've been at it for 11 months. And in fact, the whole team has been at it for well, well longer than that. And uh, the resolve has not changed. They were there from day one and they are just as, as ready. I met with them at 8.30 this morning, just in case. Mm -hmm. yeah. Show up for us all at 8.30 in the morning. They are willing to show up at midnight if Brian Johnston were to call. We are here for you, and you being here for us in this way, driving by and seeing the pickets, hearing you shout all the things that we've been trying to say at the table all this time, seeing our solidarity grow, because that's yes. what they don't want. Yeah. <laughs> They spent 11 months telling my colleague before me and me that we didn't know what our membership wanted. You guys were never going to go out on strike. You didn't have it in you. Well, I guess we showed them. <laughs> and I just want to say that, uh, yeah, this is the greatest place that I don't want to be. And I especially don't want to be out with you when next week, please God, I am in the hotel room and you are outside doing this. And every time I have to say... Mr. Johnston, I think that that offer is horse hockey. <laughs> I want you guys to yell something. <laughs> Score. I want you, get, you guys are going to make noise, and that's what's going to, the fear that they feel every time they hear us is what's going to take us over the line, right? That's what's going to do it. So you keep going, and we will keep going for you. Thank you. <laughs> Got a few more things uh, coming up, but I did want to give a shout out to uh, Jen Taylor, who can't be here, um, who's feeling a bit under the weather, but she was so upset she couldn't be here. So I just want to say thanks, Jen, for uh, all the things. Carl. Carl from <laughs> President of the Federation of Labor. Uh, it's been a little warmer here than it has been out at the picket line at dinner time there. That was <laughs> oh, oh, oh yeah. But you sure, <laughs> but you sure showed them where, where you are. You're all together, and the solidarity of this is great. Uh, you're being commended for the great picket lines that you've been running, and it's great to see so many people out there, and it's so well organized and everything else. But one thing we got to remember is where's the premier? Yeah. yeah. I don't see any buses coming by here or the picket line. Yeah. He says he's for all islanders. Where is he? Where is he? Yeah. Where is he? Okay. He's not for all islanders. He's not for the workers, whether you're educational workers, health workers, or any kind of workers. He's not for them. No. Woo!
we all know who's for you and who, who's been on your picket line. So we ask that you remember that and vote for people that support you, not for the ones that don't want anything to do with you. We even heard one conservative come out here, well, I can't say anything today or whatever, and uh, he doesn't want to say they're with you, the party's going to do something. But another thing we've got to do too is encourage people to put their names in to engage BEI to sit on the board of directors. <laughs> positions on there that have been up for over a year in May and we need regular Islanders on that board because you're not asking for anything ridiculous all you want's a fair deal yes. yeah. there's nothing ridiculous there we want a fair deal so we can give a good education to the children of this province yeah. and again thanks for the other affiliated unions that have shown up here I see a few of them here today <laughs> Picket lines have some positive stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You get to see people you don't have time to talk to when you're working. Yeah. You know what side you're on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, and these, it'd be new friendships, new everything else, and, and you know who the bosses are. And I mean, it's a great opportunity for that. It builds a lot of solidarity. It makes working conditions better when you go back to work. Uh, yeah. There's all kinds of pluses of picket lines. But we hope it's short and government gets the message and why they're staying clear of it with an election on and won't even comment or come near the lines, I think they should be told the same thing. I appreciate Carl, Carl's suggestion about applying to engage PEI so you can be more involved. I keep applying to be on the labor board. I never hear back. I think there's something going on there, but I'm not quite sure. Uh, there is an election uh, this Monday. What? And, uh, and that's a nice segue into one of our candidates, Michelle. Yeah. You have to come and say a few words. Michelle has joined us on the line and is, is, is the leader of one of the three parties that have committed to not legislating us back to work. Yeah. You can guess what the other party is, I'm sure. Uh -huh. Mike, that's awesome. Yeah, that's one of the very first things we said when we heard you guys were going on strike. The NDP would absolutely never legislate workers back to work. Never. We know how strong you are. I was out on that very first day when it was bloody cold, right? It's one of those things when you're a worker and you're on strike, you're out there no matter what. Rain, sleet, cold, what well, doesn't matter. You get out, you support your brothers and sisters, and you make sure you're there for them. That's what I'm about. I'm all about workers. That's what the NDP is all about. And I really hope that everyone gets out to vote, because you know what? If we get in, we have your back. We definitely have your back. I think I'd like to turn this over to Lori. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. What? Award-winning poet. Oh yeah. Oh, thank you. So yeah, Lori Franklow from Island Studies. My research looks at the power of art, the power of writing, the power of music, the power of poetry to change hearts and minds. And I don't just research it; I do it. And my the main thing is looking at islands, and this is the best island in the world. I turned it off. I should know a microphone better than this. <laughs> islands are the best, and this is the best place. Um, I decided after last week when I was here that it is up to, we have to have a voice now too, along with the professors and the walkers and the foodies and all of you people who are just supporting us. I think to have that heart underneath everything is what we're going to try and add to this. And this is a poem that I wrote when I went home. It's called Two Thumbs Down. <laughs> My father was a union man, operating engineers, Local 115, heavy equipment and crane operator building pulp mills and pipelines when he wasn't on strike. So many lean times with fat cats versus workers, knowing young that if only I had the courage, 
I would have marched up to those mill owners and been the headline next day, 10-year-old girl ends strike. <laughs> I still have the plaque the union gave me at the luncheon in the fancy hotel. $300 scholarship for the first generation kid in both families to graduate from high school, let alone go to university. And the photo of dad dressed up in his best jeans and checked pearl uh, pearl dome shirt, string tie and cowboy boots, and me in my long green corduroy dress with the gingham trim holding the plaque. I remember only picking at the stuffed Cornish game hen because I thought the wild rice was its guts. <laughs> now, a half century later, if I've learned anything, courage is not what we lack. It's the lifeblood of this place the beating heart that keeps us marching University and Belvedere, knowing right from wrong, integrity from cowardice. Waving our orange pool noodles at the fat cats crossing the line in their big fancy cars, watching them take both hands off the wheel to give two thumbs down in their sorry attempt to take this place with it. Mm. Woo! the music portion. Um, Paul and Mike and Richard, anybody else who wants to come up, we did, or Paul started it. Come on up. We started, um, he started last week. We were marching uh, the tambourine, beating up down University Avenue, and uh, this song came to mind. The Fixin' to Die Rag. Anybody remember that? Okie dokie. So, Mike. We have lyrics, we want you to sing along. We have Richard and Lee Ellen coming up to help out too. Okay, here we go. Is the mic still on? Yeah, okay, you're singing too. All right. Okay, come on, go. Mike's off. Come on, all you young people. Friends come all in a terrible table. Put down your books and pick up the sign. We're going to have a hell of a time. First one's on our block that brings the table to the table. And it's one, two, three. What are we striking for? Educational quality. It means so much to me. And it's five, six, seven, eight. Let's go, she eats. Ain't no time to wonder why. Education is not a Give us good work conditions, we'll fulfill the 
missions of UPPR. So you heard from the NDP party, I'd like you to get a chance to hear from the Green Party. Hello everybody. That is one tough act to follow. I'm not going to sing my words. I wish I could. Um, I just want to say thank you for staying strong and staying together and fighting for better working conditions for yourself, which in turn gives better learning conditions to our students, which is both things extremely important. And I just, it just, ever, it feels like we blinked. You know, we were here last week and then we blinked and we're here again. And um, all the different flags this time from last time, the support is incredible. And stand strong. We stand with you in solidarity and thank you for what you're doing. I want to say it's an emotional experience for going through COVID and being very alienated and seeing all these faces now and, and, and friends I've made and seeing people that really love this place and it's just incredible and I just, uh, I just wanted to say thank you so much. Like I, I also want to open up the mic if anyone wants to share their experience of, of, of this, this strike so far, what it's meant to them or anything you want to share, feel free. Um, you know, anyone named Breton? <laughs> yeah, we, we didn't plan that. All right. I'm Breton, and I have been teaching in the UPI Faculty of Arts and other faculties, too, for 17 years now, and I'm still without a contract. I'm still a sessional uh, professor. Oh, no, no, I'm not a professor. I'm a sessional instructor. I'm not one of the professors that our VPAR talks about in the newspaper. As long as you leave all of us contingent faculty out, he's got all the numbers probably pretty close to right, right? Yeah. Well, I, I just want to say, the re there's a reason that I'm contingent. I'm contingent because they want to be able to make me disappear. They want to choose economics over me. They want to choose administrative salaries over me. They want to choose building buildings over these sessional faculty. And when they do so, they're choosing the thousands of students that are taught every day by contingent faculty. And I'm here to say that whatever happens, whatever's on the books, whatever the future holds for UPEI, no teacher is contingent. We are integral. Start calling people out, but. Hi, everybody. Another beautiful day, another amazing rally. Still no negotiation. And also, I'm still not involved in UPI. I'm still not a teacher. I'm still not a student. But I'm still on the picket line with you guys every single day. Only united and strong. Fully support your fight for fair, for fair working conditions and only united that's possible. Full solidarity, full support, and I'll stand with you until this is done. Anyone else? Anyone else? 
Oh God, no. Yes, no, 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 no. No, 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 not me, not me. But is, does anyone else have anything they want to say about strike relevant, not just random stuff, but. Yeah. All right, another chant. <clears throat> Everyone got it out? Everyone ready? <clears throat> Actually, you don't really need this. You just say, show up, fight back after anything I say. You got that? Okay. Ready? Uh, you guys, you guys are my friends. <laughs> when education is under attack, what do we do? When our student success is under attack, what do we do? When workers' rights are under attack, what do we do? When UPI faculty under attack, what do we do? When someone tells you, absolutely do not say show up, fight back, what do you do? Show up, fight back! Alright, I like to hear that. I like to hear that. I know, I know we don't want to do this again next Thursday, but damn, this is cool. <laughs> this, not the other stuff, but like, yeah, like, hopefully we don't have to do this again, but man, we will, and we will do it until we're done, and until we preserve the educational quality of our institutions and protect post-secondary education on this island and across the country. Thank you so much. Unless there's anything else anyone wants to say, um. We love you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Solidarity.